Hey, welcome to the IPR Game Room, and today we'll be talking about the Cthuliana magazine, Bayat al-Azif. Now, before we get started, uh, I think it, it's worth taking a moment and pausing and saying that there are uh, some significant controversies surrounding H.P. Uh, Lovecraft as a writer uh, involving his racism. Uh, and better and more informed minds than I have commented at some length on this, uh, including Guillermo del Toro, uh, Chris Spivey uh, from Darker Hue Studios, uh, Ken Height, uh, Fred Hicks, the publisher from Evil Hat Productions, they all come to mind. They've all had comments to make on this. Um, I have a lot, I kind of have a lot of thoughts on this subject. Um, and so we're considering here, since we carry so much Lovecraft derived product, the idea of maybe having a, like a live cast or a panel cast where we have a group of people discuss it at some length. Um, nevertheless, I want to say that we are, we are aware of the problems with Lovecraft and they are significant. Um, but, uh, with that said, uh, I want to go ahead and move, move ahead and talk about this wonderful series of magazines, uh, cause I am in fact, uh, a, a big fan of Cthuliana and Lovecraftiana and generally, uh, separate from the flaws of the original creator of the Cthulhu mythos. Uh, it is a, it is a kind of a, a wonderful and crazy and interesting and deeply Deeply American subgenre uh, for both fiction and gaming, uh, considering that its original creator was an amazing Anglophile, and I think I think would have very much liked to have thought it as as not being uniquely American, but I think it is. Um, so, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Lovecraft uh, or Cthuliana, Lovecraft was a pulp era writer. Uh, he wrote a lot of short stories and novelettes, really. I wouldn't even call most of them novellas. Probably the closest to a novel he ever wrote was um, uh, Shadow Over Innsmouth, uh, which is probably 30,000 words. Uh, he was prolific, uh, and he created a cycle of myths involving imaginary gods and imaginary works of fiction, uh, which really centered around the death of God. Really, with Lovecraft, you're dealing with terror that comes from a universe that doesn't care about you. Um, so, Bayat al-Azif is a magazine. There have been three issues so far. Here, I will take them down so you can see. Lovingly crafted with beautiful covers. Um, and they are dedicated specifically to uh, Lovecraftiana ga role-playing games. Specifically. Uh, every issue of Bayat al-Azif uh, has um, ha begins with a review of, of everything sort of published in the world of Lovecraft role-playing games, and there is a lot. It's a prolific genre between the release of one and the next. Uh, every issue contains unique uh, scenarios uh, for use with Lovecraftian gaming, uh, usually written for um, Call of Cthulhu's rules, but sometimes for other things like Trail of Cthulhu uh, and Cthulhu Dark and other things, but generally one's translatable into another without really a lot of effort. Uh, it contains interviews, uh, a lot, a lot of interviews with people that are significant to the world of, of Lovecraft gaming. Uh, I believe I mentioned Chris Spivey earlier. There's an interview, I believe, in issue three uh, with Chris with Chris Spivey. Um, there are quite a lot of interviews with quite a lot of people. Uh, there are retrospectives on old products. There's a lot of discussion of kind of like uh, products from the '80s. Uh, there's discussions of other uh, Lovecraftiana gaming magazines. There's like review, like reviews of them as a whole. I guess there was a rather prolific magazine published in Germany for a decade. They have a, like a big article on that, one of the issues. Um, there's um, uh, a lot of discussing of the various uh, subtexts and aspects of, La of Cthuliana. It's all very intelligent, often by authors and scholars. Um, it, is, it is really uh, kind of a must. Um, for those of you who are interested in this topic or enjoy playing games like Call of Cthulhu or Cthulhu Dark or Trail of Cthulhu or really the list goes on. There's a lot of, of Cthuliana games. Um, but it is, it is very specifically focused around role-playing games in Cthulhuana. Um, so you're not going to find like reviews of plushies or, 
you know, uh, whatever Arkham House, uh, the in-house publishing organ that was set up by friends and disciples of Lovecraft after his death to keep Lovecraft mythos stuff publishing, you're not going to find uh, a lot of articles of reviewing new stuff from Arkham House or whatever the case may be. There, there is actually, though, a, a fascinating article about the uh, the presence of the Cthulhu mythos in first edition D&D in the deities and demigods and the ins and outs of what happened. There's a very good article about that. Some of you might want to get that for that alone, because that's actually been a pretty controversial topic amongst us oldsters uh, for over the years of like, why were they there and then suddenly gone after two printings? And back in the day, role-playing game book printings were, were big. Like we're talking tens of thousands. Um, Buy it all as if itself uh, is, is kind of uh, gibberish Arabic. Kind of, uh, there's there's a big explanation in issue one of how, how that goes down, but uh, Lovecraft uh, had a, a pretend book he created called the Necronomicon that was supposed to be unwritten in the 8th century in Damascus, I believe, by a person called Mad, uh, uh, Mad uh, like Abdul Azarhad, the Mad Arab, was supposedly the creator of this... Uh, non-existent work of uh, mind-bending uh, occult knowledge. Um, so uh, by it all as if, depending on how you translate it, uh, and if somebody actually speaks Arab fluently, you know, watching this, um, please feel free to correct me in the notes down below. Uh, it's supposed to mean alternately maybe a house, house of lies or house of insects or house of demons, depending on how you use it. Um, so, or it might actually not be very good Arabic at all, which would probably be in keeping with Lovecraft, who, who I don't think spoke it, but read other English writers who claimed they could. So that's kind of the humor of it. Um, the individual issues are, uh, you know, very affordable. Uh, you can pick them up here from Indie Press Revolution uh, using the links below to all three issues that have come out so far. Highly recommended if you're interested in this topic. Well worth reading. Uh, and remember to follow us on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our newsletter with the link below. And remember, gamers. Ah, the madness! The madness! The things I shouldn't have seen! Things I should never have seen!